So if you've been looking to get into digital art but you don't know where to start, let me tell you what I and other digital artists are using. Hey, what is up guys? It is TJ over here at Clifford Studio. So today I thought it'd be pretty cool to talk to you guys about what programs I use and maybe give some insight to those who are just starting out as beginners and looking to get into digital art or maybe those who are traditional artists who have been doing traditional art for a long time but are looking to make that switch. But real quick, before we get into it, I love doing these types of videos and creating concept art. Please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification to stay up to date for when I post new videos. Anyways, let's get into this. Alright, so today I wanted to share what drawing programs I use on a day to day basis. Now normally, the main program I use is Photoshop, and that's what I started out with way back in high school before even figuring out what digital painting was. But now this piece you're seeing me work on currently, I painted this in Photoshop about a year ago in early 2017. Now the main reason I paint in Photoshop, besides the fact that it's what I learned on, is because it's widely considered an industry standard. This is a pretty big deal because of how much of a commitment one has to make to learning a new program. And honestly, I can't even stress that enough, learning new programs really can be time consuming. Now don't get me wrong, I do love learning and trying out new programs, but it's not always advantageous when you're trying to streamline your process, since you're usually spending a lot of time trying to learn where everything is and you're fiddling around with the menu system. But now the big plus about it being an industry standard means that eventually when you land that dream job, you'll already be prepared to jump in with both feet and hit the ground running. Because I can tell you this right now, because of my past experience while I'm recording this video, I'm not currently working in-house at a game studio, I can tell you that they aren't going to want to wait around for you to learn that new program on top of trying to get you in the routine of their workflow. And the reason I can confidently say this, besides the fact that I've spoken with a few concept artists and art directors, is because currently as a graphic designer working in-house at a marketing agency, it's the same exact concept. When you're in the real world working, an employer expects you to know the basics, and that's what I'm really calling this. When it comes to learning a program, honestly, if time is money, then this makes perfect sense if you really think about it. And who knows, like I said, I'm not currently in-house at a game studio, and maybe there are some exceptions to this rule, and there are other game studio companies out there that are totally cool with you working on whatever program you want, you know, assuming that you're a concept artist or an illustrator, and that's awesome, but you still need to learn that program inside and out, because like I said previously, professionals don't wanna have to pay you to learn something that you already should know. And whether you agree with that or not, it's just the normal standard of things, and it's something that you need to be aware of when you're trying to get a job in the creative field. But now going back to Photoshop, being the program that I use, and for the most part, like I said, quote unquote, it's the industry standard. I wanted to talk about a few features that I absolutely love in Photoshop that you won't find in other painting apps. Because this is technically a photo manipulation slash editing program, you get way more options when it comes to producing art. One of which being the adjustments tab. Now this is normally used to edit photographs, but what some might not know is how beneficial it can be for your concept art and illustrating in general. Being able to tweak things like the contrast, saturation, levels, and curves can be huge for getting that perfect look you're going for. Even if you're going for something more dramatic, like shifting your hues and adding color gradients to grayscale images or vice versa. The other great part about this program, which there are plenty of other programs that have this nowadays, is the selection and transform tools, which really help you work more efficiently, especially when you get to know the program like the back of your hand. Now, the last great thing I want to say about this program, without making this sound like a sales pitch of course, is how friendly they've made the pricing. Now, for a long time I was against subscription-based models, but this being only $10 a month through the Creative Cloud means it's truly open to anyone. When I first started using Adobe CS6, a student edition for Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign was $500. So for the cost of entry for a high schooler, this was huge. Now, the issue with subscription-based models is once you stop paying it, the program goes away, which means after a while, you'll have had paid more over the course of X amount of years compared to if you had just bought it straight out. But anyways, going back to the whole idea of just paying $10 a month, this is a great and inexpensive way for starting out to getting your hands on an industry product. Now the second program that I've been using recently for digital painting is Procreate on the iPad Pro. Now if you watched my last video, I reviewed these two products while painting Star-Lord from the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I'll link up in the cards above and as well as in the description below. Now as I discussed in the last video, the portability of Procreate and the iPad Pro makes truly a great companion. Not to mention the touch gestures that Procreate offers lets you accomplish so much without using a keyboard, especially because you can import and export Photoshop files with this program, letting you work cross-platform, which is great for when you're on the go. 
Now, in regards to other drawing and painting apps that I'd love to explore and check out more are programs like Sketchbook Pro, Corel Painter, and even Clip Studio Paint. Now, I've heard good things from all of these, and I previously used Manga Studio, which is now Clip Studio Paint, but I've also used Sketchbook briefly and would really like to take another attempt at it. In fact, if you guys could, post down in the comments below what you guys are all using for drawing software and let me know what you like and dislike about those specific programs themselves. I'm really interested and curious about finding out what you guys like and use. Also, feel free to let me know what hardware you guys are currently using. I definitely want to do a video about that in the future, but I'd love to hear what you guys are using. Now, in regards to the other software I use to make these videos specifically, I usually use OBS to record my process on my Mac when I'm painting in Photoshop, and then of course I use Procreate's video time-lapse exporting feature or iOS 11 screen recording feature. Now for editing, I've recently been using Adobe Premiere, which is part of the Creative Cloud suite, which has really let me push my creative freedom and the ability to produce videos lately. However, with that being said, I started out in iMovie on my MacBook Pro, and honestly, it worked just fine, and if that's all you have, don't assume it can't hold its own. It's a phenomenal program to start with, and I love the simplicity of it. It's really easy to use and caters to beginners. And then finally, when I'm recording my audio, like this, which I'm doing right now, I for the most part have been using Audacity, which is a free program, by the way, on Mac and Windows, and honestly, it's fantastic, especially because it costs you nothing. All right, guys, anyways, we're coming to the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please remember to leave a like. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more of this content, please feel free to subscribe. This is a great community that we've built so far, and I've had so much fun connecting and talking with you guys down in the comments below. It's been a ton of fun, and I'm totally looking forward to having some more awesome conversations with you guys. If any of you guys are interested in following me behind the scenes and even talking to me directly through my other social media channels, I'm going to link them down in the description as well as at the end of this video. Anyways, guys, this has been TJ from Clifford Studio. Take care.